uh, phase one of Lumpy Gravy were only in it for the money. Uh, that album that came out in 1967, an absolute masterpiece. You, you, you laugh. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, I the, do. Uh, yes, I do. yes uh, you know, the, 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 the one cut in there, where they keep repeating over and over, are you hung up? And mm-hmm. I'm hearing that in this song, and I am so impressed with the way that you were able to blend that influence with a Little Feet influence with a cream influence with Phil Brown's influence. I think you're and, under the influence. Uh, yeah, well, sometimes I have been, sometimes in the past, yes. Uh, I mean, I don't go the, the, the sober road, but, you know, maybe two or three beers a month. But, yes, I do have vivid memories of euphoria. Uh, anyway, no, I just wanted to I was, uh, out. I was listening to the song and so taken with it. But, uh, anyway, David, you said you, you got something you want to throw in there. Yeah, we're going to run out of time. I wanted to be sure. And first off, ask Phil, we're going to be able to get you back here again so we can talk more in the not-too-far-distant future. Uh, it'd be my honor to come back. Again. Be our pleasure to have you join us. Now, in the space of about thirty seconds here, tell us a little bit about this next track we're going to play. A uh, thing you uh, also supplied for us, and we're very glad. I want to get this on before we run out of time. It's called "Cries and Whispers." Tell us about it, Phil. Originally, I was signed to Warner Brothers as a writer, and a friend of mine from England said, "Let's write something for Roger Dalton." So we did. He never cut this, and then. Over this last year, I said, I should remake that song. So I did. And what you're hearing is what we were thinking of. You'll hear the Tony Bennett influence, and I was a huge fan of the Rat Pack, so this song sort of came out of that yeah. songwriting genre that came out. Uh, you guys have a listen. I hope you like it. Fantastic. A totally different sound. I think our listeners are going to like it, too. Phil, thank you so much for coming and sharing thank with you, us Phil. today. We definitely want to have you come back in the future, and you get that album made. Uh, give us a holler. We'll be glad to help you uh, premiere it and kick it off. Ladies and gentlemen, Phil that Brown. Fantastic. Uh, you can go to philbrownguitar.com. Find out more information if you want. Great. Thanks again. Phil Brown, ladies and gentlemen, Cries and Whispers. You crossed my mind today Though you're a million miles away And though you made me cry I'll take you back Any old
There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's Phil Brown, formerly of Little Feet, now with his group called Apaches from Paris. And the next time we have him on the show, we're going to have to ask him about that name. I, I have a hunch there's a story uh, that goes along with the name of his group. Uh, I love the name. Paris. The name is the name is terrific. Yeah. I love the music, too. And I love our next guest, who's going to be joining us in about three and a half minutes, Miss Nikki Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is on Heartbeat. Beat. Come on in here and say hello, Nikki. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, Nikki. Welcome back. Hey. Welcome back. So glad to have you here you? with How us. How are you both doing? Good. Well, uh, we're doing as uh, as well as a couple of old radio guys can. I mean, yeah, hanging in there. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm, I'm hanging in there. I'm still sore from the accident, but, you know, I'm getting well, better. Well, that's at, at least you're uh, at least you're getting better. That's the important thing, and uh, yes. we're gl- we're glad to have you back here on the show with us. Thank you for the uh, for coming and spending some time with us. And I know you've got a uh, you got a message we want to get into here because uh, Heartbeat that we just played is the title tune from an album that you not only have yet to uh, put out, but uh, you're doing a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, to finance the production of the album, and uh, we wanted to uh, we wanted to not only share that with our uh, with our listeners, but we wanted you to uh, maybe come in and explain not only 
how Kickstarter works, but why you chose to do it this way. Sure. Yeah. So, um, yes, I have launched a Kickstarter. Um, it's actually to help with finishing up the production of the album. Um, I've actually invested half of the money needed to complete the album and was hoping to get the other um, half to finish it through Kickstarter. Um, nowadays, though, uh, you know, launching an album after doing a Kickstarter is not uncommon. Um, there's a lot of bands that have done it, um, Toad the Wet Sprocket, TLC, uh, using Kickstarter as a way to kind of get the money up front. Think of it as almost like a pre-sale and not having to go through a label, per se, to help get your project released. So we, you know, toss, toss this back and forth, and I decided to go for it. Um, it is actually not my first time running one of these, but I did this one completely different. Um, took the time to actually, uh, you know, explain what Kickstarter was, what crowdfunding is in general, the whole process, kind of gave some examples of, of bands that have utilized this in the past. Um, you really utilize social media with kicking it off with, like, live streaming and, you know, live launching and... We're now live, so yay! Right, Woo-hoo. and um, you have been. <laughs> no, I and think I the, have uh, been, yes. <laughs> hey, yes, you have been. Uh, we have seen you around uh, social media over the last few days since you started this campaign. I think the uh, the important point for uh, for the listeners, especially, is the fact that uh, it, it, to understand that the it's a double edged sword. Uh, in the days when the record companies financed uh, the artist albums, and they they still do in uh, in a lot of occasions, but uh, you have so many independent artists now that the the scene has changed. And the the double edged sword bit is simply that uh, when you have a record label, a major label backing you, you have you know all the money they want to pour into uh, producing the album, promoting it, getting it out there, and getting you out on tour. But of course, the other side of the coin is you got to pay the piper, and uh, yeah. that money comes out of your profits when you do start selling. And if you don't sell a lot of uh, a lot of uh, music, then they're uh, they're not going to look too favorably on you. This way, by doing a Kickstarter campaign and financing it yourself, uh, you are obligated really to no one but the fans. And uh, in the long run, I think that's what it's all about. I mean, let's face it. The music is for the fans. You perform for the fans. Uh, why not? You know, why not do the whole thing for the fans? And- 